What's up guys, it's Phil, and today I'm going to start a new project series based on this book. This book is called The Handmade Skateboard by Matt Berger, and it's distributed by Springhouse Press. They've got a lot of good woodworking books and a lot of other things that you can find online. If you'd like to, I highly recommend you pick this book up on Amazon.com. I've got the link down below along with a lot of the other supplies that you'll need to do these projects. I am going to say that this is not a sponsored post and these guys have no idea that I'm actually doing this. Um, but my love of skateboards and my uh, attempt to learn how to make skateboards properly is what brought me to this book. Ironically, I was looking at this book online on Amazon.com when my brother sent it to me as a birthday gift. I was really considering buying it for myself and then suddenly it shows up in the mail the next day, which was awesome. This is a great book that goes through the history of skate making. It talks about a short history of the skate maker. It talks about certain profiles and professionals who are already doing this. It also gives you the anatomy of a skateboard and a couple of differences and a couple of innovations that have happened over the years. But one of the main reasons that I like this book is because it goes through and tells you how to make different types of skateboards. So what I'm going to do in this series is I'm actually going to go through the book and do each skateboard as they describe it. To make this easy and to make this comprehensive, uh, instead of jumping in and doing it my way, I'm going to do it exactly as the book describes. That way I'll know if there's anything I would want to do different in the future. Just to make it fit my personal preferences, I can do that. But I also know there's going to be a lot that I'm going to learn because the way that I would normally do things is not necessarily the way that they say to do it in the book. So the first project in this series is called the Hackboard. Now the Hackboard looks like it's pretty simple. It's something you may have already done before, but I've actually not done it. Um, what this calls for is a half inch thick piece of Baltic birch plywood and you're literally just cutting out the shape of the skateboard, throwing some trucks and grip tape on and sealing it with polyurethane and you've now made your first skateboard. That's a really great place to start. I made some skim boards that way back in the day, covered them with acrylic, epoxy, varnish, all types of different stuff. It was terrible crappy plywood, I didn't know what I was doing and now I'm happy that I can actually have an expert tell me the way to do this even though it's something that every teenager has probably done in their garage at one point or another. So let's go ahead and get started building the hackboard. Alright, so grab yourself a piece of plywood. Now right off the bat, I'm going off the plan because it requires in the book a half inch piece of birch plywood. I have a three quarter inch piece of birch plywood which I will be using. Um, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. The biggest thing about the hackboard is that it's supposed to be something that you can just do in your garage at any random point and just grab whatever you have. And what I happen to have is three quarter inch everything. So the piece of birch that I have is going to be three quarter inch. It's also not going to be 32 inches long. It's going to be 26 inches long, but that's all right. We're good to go. The next step is to make a paper template. So what I'm going to do here is I don't necessarily have the biggest piece of paper, but I do have uh, a piece that I can use. I'm going to make the front and back the same as well as left and right. So what I'm going to do is shape out what I want the front and back of the board to look like, then cut that out and go from there. So I've not done a full template, but I've done a quarter template. So now I'm going to cut this out and make it into a skateboard. All right, so I've got my eight by 26 piece of birch plywood. I'm going to take my template. Now I've got my middle point marked here and here at four inches. So what I'm going to do is line this up so that I've got my straight edge here and a straight edge there. Boom, boom. And now I can transfer from my paper template to my wood. Now if you've done a quarter like me, you're good to go. If you've done your own and you've made an entire skateboard, then hey, good on you. Go ahead and line up your center marks and mark it from front to back. But I'm not doing front to back, I'm just doing this front end. Flip it around in my middle point again. 
And then from that middle point, I'm going to line up my mark on my template right there. There's one. I'm going to flip it. And there we go. So now it's time to cut it out. And all that requires for this board is a jigsaw. So I'm gonna get my jigsaw down and start cutting this out. When cutting your board out with a jigsaw, make sure that you're cutting just outside of the edge of the line because we're gonna go back and we're gonna reshape these edges in a minute. So don't cut exactly on the line, cut just outside the edge. Next step is to take a rasp and just clean up your edges, round them off a little bit. After you're done cleaning up the edges with a wood rasp, go ahead and grab your 220 grit sandpaper and start sanding all the edges until they're nice and smooth. Now we want to figure out where our trucks are going to go. So, going from edge to edge, I'm going to mark my center line at 4 inches. And then with that, I'm going to mark edge to edge, line to line, that's my center line. So off of this center line, if I extend it a little bit farther each way, I can determine where my trucks are going to go. But starting with your center line, you want to find where the center of your trucks is going to be. So these are two and an eighth inch. So I need one and one sixteenth inch right there. Let me double check again on the front. With a pencil, a very sharp pencil, I'm going to mark the holes that I'm going to make. And that's where I'm going to drill. So the next step is to go ahead and drill your holes out. Now we want to do this using a drill bit that is slightly bigger than the threads on your hardware because the hardware threads are not supposed to be cutting into the wood like a normal screw would, but instead they're supposed to just pass through the hole. And then finally we're going to use a countersink bit to drill out a shallow countersink so that the head of our screw can sit flush with the top of our board. All right, guys, now is the time to apply your clear coat, but before you do that, if you want to apply any artwork, go ahead and do that, and then we'll do our clear coat and get on to the final steps. For this project, I chose to do a very simple hydro dip. If you want to figure out how to do this, I will have a link in the description as well as the end of the video, so you can check this out, but I'm simply doing a pretty quick hydro dip just to make it look pretty cool. Now, because I used water to do the hydro dip. The wood is just a little bit wet, but that's okay. I can go ahead and finish by using a water-based polycrylic, which is a water-based polyurethane. Water-based polyurethane prevents yellowing, which I think is going to be good because this sort of plywood is going to turn yellow over time anyway, so I would like to prevent that as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and start applying the polycrylic, and I do this by the wipe-on method, where I've already thinned this polycrylic just a little bit with some water, and I'm going to apply it liberally to the surface and let it soak in and get a good nice clear coat on this thing. Now that your finish is cured, you are ready to go. Make sure that you follow all your manufacturer specifications for dry times and recoat times and whatnot, but mine turned out pretty good, nice and glossy. Next thing you're gonna need is grip tape. Now if you're smarter than me, then you ordered this in advance or you went down to your local skate shop and picked it up. Um, me, I ordered it about two days after I started the project, so my weekend project turned into a week-long project. But, um, now I've got my grip tape, so we're gonna get that installed, get our trucks and hardware put on, and be done. So what you want to do is put your grip tape directly on top of the skateboard. Now, because of the curves of this deck, I want to oversize my grip tape just a little bit, and then go through with a screwdriver or a rough edge and just kind of work out the shapes of the skateboard and then go back later and cut that out with a razor blade or sharp knife. After that we're going to press holes through the grip tape where our hardware is going to stick through and then we start final installation.
Hardware's on. Ready to go. So there it is. The hack board. Again, this board is really cool. Um, one of the things that I like about it is it really is something that you can truly knock out in a weekend. It takes little to no effort, no expertise. You can do pretty cool artwork on it. Just about anything you want to do, you can do. Um, again, it's a pretty simple weekend project for anybody who's been looking to make their own skateboard. So I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. Um, for a weekend project, this is pretty awesome. It was very easy to make. The artwork was extremely easy. All of this is stuff that you guys could do at home in your garage over a weekend. It's very simple and I really enjoyed doing it. Now I've got some 81 millimeter wheels on here that I got from Sector 9 at Surf Expo a couple years ago and they are massive. I really don't think these are going to work. I think I'm going to get a lot of wheel bite. Um, so I'm going to try this thing out and I will probably change out the wheels pretty quickly especially because I forgot to get risers. Um, but I'm going to try this board out. It looks cool. It was fun to build, but let's see how it rides. So, conclusion time. Move Yoshi, get on my seat. This is one sweet little board. Because of its small size, I can actually store it just about anywhere. Right here. And now it's safe. So yeah, in conclusion, I'd say that it's a really good board. Um, it's thick and heavy, which is, you know, kind of nice. Um, not too bad on turning. I do really, really, really recommend that you know what trucks and wheels you're using ahead of time so that you can cut out the spaces or divots so that you don't get wheel bite. Because I made it so small, mine's a little street cruiser, um, it does get wheel bite on my heel on the back foot if I'm not careful. I'm out of breath and it's hot. So for anybody out there making one of these in their garage, this is a really great little project. Um, it was quick, it was easy, and it looks really cool. I already get a lot of compliments on it, so hey, go for it make yourself a hack board. So just to make these videos a little bit sweeter, I've decided that I'm going to give away each of the boards that I make in this series. So for starters, if you like this hack board, you think it's really cool, um, just subscribe to my channel, comment below in this video, tell me what you like and what you didn't like about the video, about my channel, about my face, whatever, and you could win this deck. Yes, it is the deck only. The hardware is mine. It's from my longboard and it's pretty expensive, so I'm going to keep it. But the deck is available, so make sure to subscribe to my channel. Make sure to like and share this video for more chances to win. I'm going to pick the winner out of one of my subscribers who has commented on this video, liked this video, or shared this video to some other social media. So that's three chances to win. Go ahead and enter the contest. I'm going to do that for each of these videos and each of these skateboards as I go. So someone's going to get this super awesome hack board. I hope it's you.